Tierra here with Gypsy Fae Creations. Thanks so much for tuning in. It may look like I am making some sort of shake right now or smoothie, but I am in fact making soap. I was inspired by this banana pudding fragrance from Virginia Candle Supply Company. And for some reason it reminded me of banana bread. And then from there I went from banana bread to a banana oatmeal and chocolate loaf bread. I've made that before in real life so I thought why not put it in soap. Usually when you have bananas that are going bad you usually put them into banana bread, right? <laughs> but I am putting real fresh banana into my soap today and so I have minus four ounces of water from my, my lye solution so that I can replace it with banana puree as part of the water as well. I also have some oatmeal, just some rolled oats that I've also blended up in my food processor to get really, really fine. And then I have some honey, and I'm gonna be putting some cocoa powder in here, so I probably could make a real banana bread loaf with this stuff, but I'm gonna put it in soap. <laughs> Let's get started. So I ran that banana and honey through my Ninja, and I'm gonna scrape as much of this out as I can. I'll go back over it with a stick blender just to make sure it is incorporated. There's no chunks. You don't want any pieces of banana in your soap. You just want it to be a puree. So we'll incorporate that. I'm going to be working in layers today. I want to do three different colors and also some mica lines or cocoa line, pencil lines with the cocoa powder. Whatever is the best way of saying that. All right, give this a little mix. So now I'm gonna add the lye solution that also has Tussa silk in it, sodium lactate. And then in my oils, there are seven different oils in this. There's also some coconut milk powder and some kaolin clay in there. I'm just gonna incorporate this all together with my my whisk here and just kind of go in layers because we want this to stay very fluid. It's going to change to a funky color when that lye and banana react together, but it is temporary. That banana may add a little bit of color and a little bit of specks in there. The fragrance does have like 1.3% vanillin in it, so that also might discolor which I'm not gonna be upset about because banana bread is brown. So if I get any kind of color in here, I'll be happy. So I'm gonna split off my first layer into this bucket and I'm going to color it with some mocha brown mica pop powder by Nurture. So I'm going to add in my fragrance. This is a blend of banana wafers, ripe banana, and meringue. To me, it just smells like banana Laffy Taffy or runts, but maybe once I get it into the soap, it'll smell more like a banana pudding. But I'll hand mix that in. I'm gonna add some of my oats. I'm going to pour it into my molds for my first layer. So far, it is really behaving well. That actually slowed down Trace, and it got even more liquidy than it was, so maybe that is a good thing. <laughs> for now, until I'm waiting for it to set up in my molds forever, I right, just get some of these oats in there. Stir them in. It's gonna be such a yummy looking and smelling soap, but it's going to be great for the skin as well. All right, let's get the molds over here. So I'll just split this up while I'm waiting into these other buckets. Not going to be even layers and I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm going to color the middle layer with some titanium dioxide that's been dispersed in water. Not going for like super white but just like a lighter shade 
And then into this guy, I am going to put some lemon chiffon mica to represent the banana. I love this color for the banana in beds. If I just add just a little teeny tiny pinch of this to it, it creates a pretty banana looking color. And I'll show you those embeds when I go to put them on, but this is what I use to color it. So I'll just mix that in, still patiently waiting for the layers to set up. That fragrance went very, very fluid. So I highly recommend it if you're gonna use it for any fancy swirls or designs. So far, it's just behaving really well. I think it's ready to go. So I have this tiny, teeny, tiny little spoon here, and I'm just gonna texture this bottom layer. Ooh, this is gonna be so good. So excited. <laughs> like I am with all my soaps, what am I talking about? And then I'm gonna go and get my cocoa powder and my little tea strainer thing. <laughs> so great with my words right now. I'm just using great descriptive words, right? <laughs> that thing, you know, you ever, you ever do that? Just give me that thing or can you hand me that thing or, you know, that thing. <laughs> just describe everything as that thing. Everything is that thing. All right, I'm gonna just make a mess here with my cocoa powder and get my line going on here. I'm gonna call it a mica line, but it's with cocoa powder, not mica, so. Cocoa powder line. And then we'll just mix up the rest of those layers and do the same thing on every single layer. Finally, we're going to add the fragrance and the ground oats to the yellow layer that's looking very orange right now, I know, but it will go back to a pretty yellow once it's done saponifying. All right, and then I'm going to put some pretty little dollops of icing, soapy frosting on top of this as well and some little banana in beds. So it's kind of like a mixture between banana bread pudding and banana bread. So these are the banana slices that I'm going to be putting on top of the dollops for the soap, this is a vanulet mold, and I'll leave a link for it below, but I just think they look so realistic. So I'm gonna get some dollops on here with a 1M, this is a Caroline crumb tip, and I'm not covering this whole entire soap in frosting. I'm just gonna go down the middle here. It almost looks like it could be pumpkin bread or carrot cake. Can't wait for that orange color to turn back to yellow. So, five points to anyone that can name the mushroom capital of the world. When I found out there was a mushroom festival, I knew I had to go to it. And if you guys have been following me for a while on here or on Instagram, you might know that I am obsessed with mushrooms. Whether it's decorating the or eating them, or, I don't know, crafting with them. I just think they're the cutest little things. So, Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. 
known for mushrooms. That is where a majority of the mushrooms come from, at least in the US. And they had a really big festival and me and Bradley got to go to it and I just thought it was so cool. There was just mushroom everything, of course. There was even mushroom ice cream. Yes, we did try it and I actually tried the pumpkin and mushroom ice cream and it wasn't bad at all. We actually ate the whole entire thing. It wasn't disgusting. The mushroom didn't have any taste to it. It wasn't like an earthy taste in there, but it did add like a little bit of texture to it. We had this chorizo and mushroom gravy on biscuits. There was fried mushrooms there. There's just mushroom, everything you can possibly think of. <clears throat> and when they even had a little exhibit tent to go in where you could see how mushrooms are actually grown and harvested. And I will never take a mushroom for granted ever again because so much work goes into making the compost to just harvesting the spores and waiting for these things to grow. It is nuts. I didn't know it was so complicated. They make the compost with the uh, cacao pods that they get from Hershey's, get the Hershey's Chocolate Factory. I mean, there's straw and hay and manure that goes into it. I didn't quite think about that. <laughs> kind of gross but it is what it is so yeah I'm gonna leave some footage at the end we bought a five pound box of portobello mushrooms I think we are mushroomed out from all the soup and the grilling them and putting them in salads didn't think about that when buying five pounds of mushrooms you can't really keep them that long so I was just mushroomed out by the end of the week I've never heard of a lion's mane or pom-pom mushroom. I thought that was very unusual. I think I have too many embeds here. Nope. There we go. Fix that. So I am going to add a little bit of cocoa powder dusting on here to kind of look like cinnamon and some more ro rolled oats on here as well. So let's get a little bit of cocoa powder in here. I'm going to try not to get too much on here. Just a little dusting. That's going to look so yummy. So I highly recommend if you guys are ever in the area of Kennett Square. It is the, the weekend after Labor Day in September that they host this festival. And the street is just lined with vendors and things that are mushrooms. You can go into the Masonic Lodge there and they give you bowls of mushroom soup that apparently is like a tradition and I don't know, it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of things to do if you have kids there, if you want to go shopping. It was just very informative and delicious and all the shops along the street also offer their famous mushroom dishes so you can go in and shop or eat in any of the restaurants. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. All right, I think I'm good with that. That is gonna look delicious once it's cut into and the end. <laughs> so I'll leave this sit for 24 hours. I'll come back and cut it. And I'm excited to see those layers and lines in there. So a little spray of the rubbing alcohol and we're all done. So before I cut this, I just wanted to show you how gorgeous it looks out of the mold. It looks so yummy. Those lines, those colors. Let's cut it. All right, these oats might cause a little bit of a drag mark throughout the soap, but it's not a big deal. I might have to turn it on its side. Yeah, or these can probably be smoothed out a little bit. I thought I would for sure have glycerin rivers in this. Let's try turning it on its side. Because of all those extra sugars from the honey and the milk and the banana, it went through a gel phase. It did heat up and gel, but I don't see any glycerin rivers and that is awesome. All right, so that's the bad side. This is the good side. No more drag marks. It smells a lot better than it did out of the bottle, that fragrance. It smells delicious. I think 
the pumpkin and mushroom ice cream I was telling you guys about. It beats any of the weird flavors I've ever tried. I think it tops the list of any weird flavor ice cream I have ever had. Question for you guys, and I will leave a poll for you in the upper right hand corner. Do you like mushrooms? Because I have a lot of friends or know a lot of people that think they're disgusting and gross and won't eat them or pick them out. So I love them, as I've said before, but I know a lot of people who just don't like them. So would you eat pumpkin and <laughs> any type of mushroom ice cream? If you, if you do like mushrooms, let me know. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. These soaps will be available on the next shop update, which is going to be November 22nd. So you guys can get one of these if you like on November 22nd. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Questions or comments, leave them for me down below. And until next time, I hope you guys have a very nice day, and I will smell you later. So huge, it's crazy.